we are ready to um, get into Genesis 17 a little further. I think we've only had one class that has dealt with it. <clears throat> and um, just to catch anyone up who hasn't been in on it, I think we'll just read some, maybe just read the whole chapter. We'll see how far we go in Genesis 17. And um, because it's a very, it's just basically one encounter that God had with Abraham, Ab Abram, and then he gives him a new name. And um, um, <clears throat> it's, um, we talked about it last time. We talked about that uh, Genesis 17 is a change. It's a, it's, a, it's a mammoth change. It's a huge change because everything up to uh, Genesis 17 has been dealing with um, the, the faith walk, uh, but more the, just believing in God, you know, believing what he said. I will do this, I'll do that. And, and, uh, and so he had no... <clears throat> um, uh, place other than to just believe God to what he said. But in uh, Genesis 17, 1, there is, uh, the Lord appears after 13 years. And, um, and he says this, this is Genesis 17, 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, so that's 99. The Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, well, let's hold up on the covenant part. All right. So this is, um, there's, there's still some more significant stuff here in verses uh, 1 through uh, three, uh, this is, um, the Lord hasn't spoke to him in 13 years. Um, uh, the interim, the last time he spoke to him was round about before Ishmael was born or conceived, uh, born, I guess would be the better word. And, um, the Lord appears to him and the now, now, I think it's significant, the Bible's significant, all the words are significant. I think it's significant that it starts off with saying Abram was 90 years old and nine, and then the Lord appears to him and says, I am Almighty God, I am El Shaddai, I am Almighty God. Okay, and um, so uh, we've we've looked at that a little bit from a couple of different angles, um, but uh, as the Lord began to <clears throat> requicken some of those things, uh, I was reminded that um, uh, that He is as speaking of Himself as Almighty God, He's basically saying. You, Abram, you have made decisions as the head, even if someone else gave it the, the idea. <clears throat> You've made the decisions and you have chosen uh, him, Ishmael, as the firstborn. And, um, you know, you've done it uh, not maliciously, but you have chosen the wrong, okay, let me say this first, the wrong path to the firstborn. And you've chosen the wrong firstborn. Now, we, this, is, this is God saying, look, I waited for you for 13 years until you were 99 years old to come talk to you because you're going to, during that time, you'd make decisions and do this and think this is best and go this way and, and all this. And, and I, I didn't just wait because I was mad about Ishmael. I waited. My concern is you, not Ishmael. I waited until uh, you didn't have any more strength 
and any more ability, 99 years old, and um, you were getting so old that you couldn't do all this stuff. And, and so, so he says, Abr you know, the, the scripture says, uh, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am almighty God. You're not God. You don't know everything. You certainly don't know the firstborn. Say, so, well, I, you know, some of you can say, well, I, I've been in the class from the beginning. I don't know how many classes we got. Do we have a, we got four, 48 just on the Abram side, not counting Exodus and, and um, uh, uh, Cain and Abel and the prodigal son. Um, Listening to classes isn't enough, man. We need to we need to sit and hear things and go. You know what? I don't have a clue what that means. Instead of just going, yeah, this is this is great. Just because we can sort of comprehend. Okay, so we can comprehend. Yeah, he he was making decisions he shouldn't have been making. Well, somehow that doesn't translate into us looking around and going. You know what? <clears throat> I think I've been messing up. You know. Um, we, you know, people look at this coronavirus and, uh, you know, well, it's just a unfortunate accident, you know, well, well, maybe for, for everybody else, but not for you and not for me, God knows what he's doing. I mean, he's taken away our, <clears throat> our toys, you know, he's taken away our jobs, he's taken away our ability to you know uh, uh, shine on you know our job and in these places um, uh, so many things that is taken away with purpose and but but if there's even a little bit of strength you know God knows when to show up <laughs> but see he, he's not just going to show up randomly. Well, God will eventually show up. He's not. He's going to wait till you really don't, e either that you surrender or you just are, he just waits you out until you're too old to do anything. You know. Well, you know, some people say, well, I'm young, so I've got my whole life in front of me. Okay, maybe. Uh, but, uh, and then older ones say, well, you know, uh, I mean, here, Abraham's, he's in his 90s. Well, I guess he was in his 80s when Ishmael started coming about. And he still had strength up to 99 years old. His own strength. We're talking about his own strength. And so God shows up and he didn't say, you know, well, I just, I just want my seed. I just want the seed. I want it to be the right one. He shows up and says, I'm almighty God and you're 99 years old. Let's talk. Yeah. Well, could somebody when they're 25, could they, could they um, surrender? Could they say, you know what? I, I don't, I, I don't know how to steer this thing. I don't know how to navigate this. I'm, I, uh, I listen. I go to church. I, but I, in reality, I don't really have that much of the reality of it in me. Well, how about start surrendering? And and if you can't surrender yet, how about start and pray, Lord, treat me like I'm 99 years old. Bring me to that place even if it's not that age that I come to. When I'm 30, but I'm like I'm 99 years old because I, I've given up, you know, there's that, you know, folks, there's that ambition. Ambition, uh, desire to be something or to do something or to, um, uh, to have a sense that at the end of your life, you've done something good. Well, wouldn't it be tragic, tragic to have all that ambition working towards something 
and thinking like Abraham, this is the promised seed. This is exactly what he wants. And then get to the end of your life and God says, sorry, Abraham, but you totally missed the seed. Um, you know, and, um, you know, we, we, we can look at the virus thing and go, well, it's, it's taking my job, it's taking my ability to pay for my house, it's taking this and that. Uh, we're looking at all that, and, uh, and, but this could be the Lord dealing with us to come in a good way. Because when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, you're not going to stand before God and, you know, show him the keys to your Mercedes or whatever. You're not going to, you're, it ain't going to be there. Uh, you're not going to be there, uh, you know, talking about how much you served him. You will see everything in light of the lamb on the throne. Everything. And everything else is done. There's, a, there's another word for that. It's crap. I know, there's another word for that too. And it is. It is all of that. It's not worth that, all of that. It's not worth anything. It will ultimately be worth nothing. Okay, so God doing this to Abraham, bringing him to a point, uh, he doesn't show up, doesn't talk to him. Once he gets, starts going his way with his plans and I'll do this and I'll do this for God. Once he starts doing that and getting down the road with it, um, God quits talking to him. He lets him raise Ishmael. He lets him talk to Ishmael about God. Okay, well, the Ishmaelites to this day don't worship the God of Abraham, though they think they do. Different spirit. Um, you know, he, he teaches him things. He feels good about his son. And God's got one thing on his mind, and it's not Ishmael. It's not Ishmael. It's not, it's not how good of a father you were to Ishmael. It's not how you stuck to the plan and you really did the plan right. You just did it for the wrong seed. I mean, what's that? What's that? I mean, what, what does it profit a man? You know, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Would we'll say, well, it's not vexation of spirit to me. This is my ministry. <laughs> and that's not going to be vexation right now. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in light of, you know, when you see what God is enthroned, the Lamb of God, the slaughtered Lamb, you see Him that is enthroned, and you see Him that God has made judge. Okay, well, He only judges by, by one standard that's I do always those things that please the father okay did you do always those things that please the father no okay but the lambs are going to go on this side and the goats are going to go over here that's that's the choices you know well where's the good people go <laughs> kind of over here with the goats you mean yeah Let's not say it. Let's just be real quiet about it so we don't have to face it. All right. <clears throat> so I didn't, I, didn't in, I didn't in any way come to Genesis 17.1 at this moment. God has been leading us every step of the way. And he's trying to say things. And he's trying to prepare Abram because... Uh, he's about to change his name. He's about to bring him into a whole nother uh, relationship. Everything about it, <coughs> excuse me, to change this relationship <coughs> where, it, as we talked about last week, where it is a covenantal relationship where walk before me, you know, and let's let's walk this out now and not just believe well i believe the lord okay good 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 there comes a time he said i want you to walk it out with me we're gonna walk it out oh i thought i was just gonna walk it out in the church no there's there's actually something greater than church there's something greater than ministry there's something greater than than pastors 
and ministers. That's the Lord, the living Lord, the one who is the living God. David knew him, the living God, the one who was and is and is to come. And everybody gets a shot at being with him because he was and he is and he is to come. And that covers all generations forever. So everybody gets their shot, you know. 70 years and 80 if by reason of strength. So, um, and here he's 99. That almost sounds like, you know, the Lord wanting and maybe believing that he will get it, but having to put the hammer down. I mean, I, I'm not going to talk to you. There's no, I can see God thinking this way. There's no need me talking to you for this period of time for 13 years. You've already made up your mind the direction. You didn't get it from me. You thought you did, but you didn't get it from me. You've made up your mind, and this is what you're going to do, and this is how you're going to do it. So I'll just wait till you just can't do it anymore. I'll show up, and then I'll tell you, look, I'm the boss. Now, as the boss, I want you to walk with me instead of walking your own way. Trust me, next week it's going to be so fun, pleasant. But this week is the hard week. So, I can't promise next week, though. <clears throat> All right. Um, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And you know, and we've discussed that the word perfect doesn't mean sinless perfection because that's impossible with anybody but Jesus. <clears throat> but that he would, he would be mature. He's saying, okay, it's time to grow up, sonny boy. Time to grow up. Be thou mature. Walk. Little, little infants crawl, you know. And they're not very mature, but it's time to walk, but not just to walk, walk with me. He's, you know. <clears throat> and Abram, I love this. Uh, and Abram fell on his face, verse 3, and God talked with him. <laughs> okay. 99 years old, God appears. And you're trembling and everything just because you're old. Now you're trembling because he's here finally. Hadn't seen him, heard from him in 13 years. I am Almighty God. I mean, do you think God maybe paused before he moved on too quick after that? Like, like Abram went, oh boy. This is about me, isn't it? <laughs> this, is, this is, okay, you know. And then, then God starts spelling it out, and Abram falls on his face. Abram fell on his face. And God talked with him. That's, that's the way it should be, folks. I mean, I know there's some of you that, um, you know, you, you fall on your face before the Lord. I know that even if it's not physical, I know some of you that when you hear the word, and I'm not necessarily talking about what I'm sharing right now, but when you hear the word, the, the true reality of Christ uh, as, as lamb slain and all these things, that something within you falls on your face and says, you know, oh, I am undone. I cannot bear. I cannot hold. I can't even hold this. Um, but God, that's when he feels like he can talk. Like we've got so much mm, oomph that he doesn't talk for 13 years. He doesn't feel like he can talk with all of that going on. But Abram falls on his face and, and he talks with him. He starts talking. Now he's talking. Hadn't talked in a long time. Now you're talking. Why? You know? And he because you're on your face to hear it and and maybe it's driving you to your knees because you want to hear it and you're open now 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 but then you know ultimately it doesn't matter when 
but there has to be a now. You know, we say, well, it doesn't matter when. Well, it doesn't except for now. When it's your now, you need to go down on your face and, and start reevaluating and, you know, making a list and checking it twice. See, you hear how I'm preaching? I'm going to find out who's naughty or nice among you. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, saying, and as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Okay. So <clears throat> he's starting, he's talking about you're going to have to start walking. You're going to have to start doing it in a mature manner. Okay. As for me. Okay, since we're now we're going to talk covenant together, because you're going to walk this out with me. Uh, as for me, my covenant's with you. And I said last week, I said, wouldn't it have been nice to the Lord if Abram said, you know, he doesn't have to lift his head too high, but he says, and my covenant, and I, and I'm with you in your covenant. Wouldn't that have been special? I think that would have been. He would have said. You know, please don't just say words, but that's what I want. Could you imagine him kind of thinking that? Please, not just words. Everybody says words. Everybody prays a lot and says a lot. Not just words. Let it be us coming together in this covenant and walking together. You know, when I t think about walking together, of course, I always think of Enoch. Always, always. Enoch walked as, with God. And it says before that, that he, he pleased God. Praise God. He pleased him in the walk. You know. And because they were walking together. And then he was taken. He was not. Well, he was. He just wasn't down here. He was with the Lord. For all eternity then. Uh, and as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Okay, well. Um. He says, I, as for me, I will. But it's different than before when it was all God, just I will. It's covenant talk now. I will. And you? And you, Abraham? Come on. Come on. <clears throat> I will. And then... Uh, uh, there in verse 8, God changes his name. Okay, I don't know if you've ever, I don't know if you've ever really studied the, the name changes in the Bible. There are some really interesting ones. And to me, Abraham, Abram's name to Abraham is it's really, really special. Uh, uh, his name, Abram, which we've talked, we've used that name steadily up till now abram that name means exalted father exalted father what do you think of that we go yeah and he changes it to father of a multitude exalted Father, I wrote down, um, what we think God's plan is for our life is to exalt us. This is, I want to be called Abram. I want to be like Abram. No, no, no. You're not, you, you that would be, as it were, the father of Ishmael. But the seed of Abraham. Is Christ. It's it's not him. 
and it's going to be that seed that's going to end up being a multitude uh, just, you know, filling other lives. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing? I mean, the other is a, an exalted one. Remember, he went down into Egypt and he came out with all this, you know, gold and silver and, ca and cows and horses and whatever. It doesn't, I don't remember what it says, all that, but came out with all this substance. That's what it says. And all of these things, including Hagar, because, you know, he's being exalted and he's being given this stuff. And, and, and um, you know, there's this, there's this air that must be surely working in him when God spoke to him and said, I will make you all of this. But all of that stuff was externals. Now God wants to make him on the inside. But to do that, he's going to have to take away the externals or, or at least the spirit that is exalted in that. And now it's about the seed. It's about the seed. It's about the seed. It's about the seed. It's not about me being exalted. It's about the seed. So he changes it to father of a multitude. Father of a multitude. There's God's eternal plan. He's not, you know, he's not thinking, well, you know, if Abraham's going to be my man, I've heard stuff like this preached before. If Abraham's going to be my man, I'm going to have to, I'm going to make him, you know, really somebody that people will respect. I'm going to make him rich and I'm going to make him, you know, where uh, people come to him for answers and thinking that he's great and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and so they pursue, as it were, the being an exalted father of Ishmael. Exalted father. Because that's what he was up to this point. But now the talk is about the seed. And God's reinforcing it with a name change. No more, you know, you feeling so good about your son you feeling, you know, this is what God gave me. This is, you know. And God did say, I'll make you great. But then he said, all this stuff is unto thy seed, unto you and your seed. And your seed is the one who's supposed to live in you for us. Because that was the meaning of it when he said, when you remember in uh, chapter 15 when, you know, uh, he brought up, uh, Eliezer, you know, as a possible candidate for the firstborn, you know, and <laughs> and uh, God's instant reply was no, and it was just almost like, you know, I mean, just like popped out of God. No, this shall not be your seed. This isn't it. And he takes him over to an altar. That's what he did. Y'all remember that, I'm sure. He says, let's talk altar talk. Let's not be talking exalted talk or whatever. Let's talk altar talk. Let's go to the altar so that you can begin the process of understanding the seed. Okay? So, you know, most people, when they say, well, you know, and God took him, you know, out and showed him all the stars and said, so shall thy seed be. But it didn't start with that. He took him to the altar first. There's got to be a death before there can be any stars. There's got to be a death before there can be a, a, a multitude coming forth. Every one of those stars has to go into a death, if you will, before they're even a star. You go into that altar and you go, in, you go into it understanding. There is no altar if you're just suffering. There is no true altar if you're just uh, wrestling with that and uh, or 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 um, submitting to it, um, you know. Because I want to be over here, you know, looking at the stars pretty quick here. So I'll submit to this. No, the firstborn isn't identified in the heavens first. He becomes the firstborn in death. That's what happened to Jesus. He became the firstborn among many. 
Oh my. When he went to the cross and died. And out of that sprang forth as many as the... All right. So, um, uh, I, I remember I had done a... You know, I'm going to probably come back to the... Because I'm actually skipping a bit here. But um, I'm going to come back to these things um, uh, at, at another time. Maybe we'll hit some more specifics on these scriptures. But um, I remember <clears throat> long ago that I did a search on these name changes. And it's within this. Let me see if I can find that now. It's within this. Um, uh, verse 9. Um, and God said unto Abram, Thou shalt uh, keep my covenant. Okay, so, okay, so he's beginning to explain the covenant. But in the next chapter, he's going to change Sarah's name. And I thought it was interesting how that panned out. And we'll talk to it when we'll talk more, much more about it. But I'm just remembering now that, that Sarai, I guess, I don't really know how to pronounce her original name before it was changed to Sarah, meant contention. And, uh, and Sarah means princess. Okay. And I, I remember thinking that this is related to um, Sarah being the Word of God uh, in the sense of um, it's just the, uh, what is the word, schoolmaster. The, the Word was of God, but it was a schoolmaster. The law was a schoolmaster. And it's meant to bring us to Sarah being a prince, not to Sarah, but to that coming out of us as that part of the bride. And one of the things that I really remember when I was in the middle of studying that and then studying the names was that, uh, and I probably have this in my notes anyway, but, uh, was that God would say to them, like Abraham, you are no longer... Abram, you are now Abraham. He says to Peter, thou art no more, you know, Peter, but Cephas, a rock upon a rock. You'll be a rock. Well, in neither one of these cases, including Sarah's, was the change immediate. And nor was it guaranteed. Does that sound strange? It's not guaranteed God will call those things which be not as though they were until they become. That's in Mark, what, 11. God calls those things which be not as though it were, but it's not yet. Hope you're following that. Let me repeat the, the verse there. What, 11, 24, something like that. God calls those things which be not as though they were. Meaning they're not yet, but he's calling it like it was. Abram, you're going to be Abraham. Well, he didn't just walk off and start, you know, having babies fall out of his wife immediately. You know, Uh the whole process, I mean, it, it took a little while before chapter 22, before even the first one came out. And just having Isaac then, I mean, if you're going to just talk in the natural, well, that's not a father multitude, that's a father one. But isn't that multitude in Isaac? When he starts having seed and then it goes through... Um, Jacob, and then Jacob turns into Israel, 12 sons, and 12 sons turn into 12 tribes, and you know, so on and so forth. And I'm not trying to be accurate in every way saying this. I'm trying to draw a picture that, uh, and, and this example was used in the book of Hebrews when it was talking about uh, that Abraham paid tithes but they went all the way back to one of his seed that came out of him that was greater in that sense. 
So anyway, the, the point is that God is after something and we're supposed to hear these name changes um, and these things that he says to us, we're supposed to hear them not as though they're already worked in us and we're already walking in it. He just for the first time mentioned walk, walking together. But as this is God's intention, more than that, this is God's desire, more than that, this was what he spoke that's in his heart concerning me. This is, this is, I can know the heart and the desires of God by just paying attention to things like this. And, you know, um, with Abraham, he definitely did become a father of, of a multitude. And he definitely did leave the place of being an exalted father. Now, Interestingly enough, by the time Jesus came, the Jews, the rabbis, the, the people had already started exalting Abraham. He was an exalted father. You remember, there's different places when they're talking with Jesus, and Jesus says, you're of your father the devil. And he says, we're not of our father the devil. Abraham is our father, and we're... You know, we're the right stuff and, you know, we're, you know, a God and, you know, and they're, they're using him in an exalted way to exalt themselves. Well, that's not what the, that's not what the father had in mind, the real father. That's not what was in his heart. The, to, to look down at that, to see that, to see those spirits, I mean, like, like serpents crawling around all all around just everywhere full of a wrong spirit and poison and it'll attack you and bite you and put poison into you and then he sees the lamb of god that'll just be hung on a cross for the serpents to become lambs i mean what what kind of folly is that what kind of madness is that it is the wisdom of God. It is. First Corinthians chapter 1. It is the wisdom of God. But some think, you know, the, the, the Greeks think that having great wisdom and the Jews thinking having supernatural things going on. But we preach Christ crucified. All right. We preach Christ crucified. The wisdom and the power of God. Amen. Well, probably next time we'll get into this when the when he really starts talking about the covenant. Uh, somewhere I have an old book written on the covenant, very old book, um, on circumcision and the difference between circumcision and the sign that's in your flesh. And there's a big difference between the two. There's a big difference. And I go through a lot of the scriptures that have to do with that. I don't even remember the name of it. Something about circumcision. Well, this was an old, old book I wrote way before that. Okay, the Holy Spirit trying to tell me something and I'm not listening. Maybe it wasn't. Anyway, so I think I will end because um, we do have another class and uh, because of the situation that we're in, there's certain things that you have to do now and certain things that Kelly has to do and Lindsay's involved and other people to be sure to be able to either get the audio or the video out so that others who haven't been watching this can um, maybe get the Lord from it also. So we'll just uh, close with prayer. Father, we just thank you 
Lord. We thank you for all of this exhortation um, because, Father, we need it because we, we get passive. We get settled. We, we camp. We should, we're like Israel coming out of, the, out of Egypt and we find a nice, comfortable place along the way and we just camp there in the wilderness and say, well, this is the will of God. This is, this is what he wants. So, Father, I just pray that, you know, we won't get comfortable, but we'll keep on the journey, we'll keep our hearts going so that we can enter in to the promised land, Father, not just believe in it, not just have writings that Moses got from you and that speak of it as a, as a certain thing, but rather see it as what is eternal for us eternal reality for us. Father, may we begin to grasp that more and more, more and more, and live less and less uh, down here except as strangers and pilgrims just passing through to deliver what you've given us to deliver of the life and nature of Christ. And of, of, as Paul said, I'm determined not to know anything among you but Christ in him crucified. Father, we just ask you to do it in Jesus' name. Amen.